Universal Ones Artist Collective. I am your host, Buddy James. Please don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. And always, if you like our content, hit that bell because that's how we get seen. Thank you again. Enjoy the episode. All right, today's episode we have James Sorensen explaining Edwin Call's model, the structured atom model, or SAM. The basics of SAM, and we were talking about platonic solids and how, and how the icosahedron is the largest shape you can make that's still densely packed towards a common center. Um, and so what happens, you know, according to his theory, is from there we start building the bigger atoms. So, so we've taken the icosahedron now as this light blue in the middle, and then we've, we've put these four on our what we call the grow points, and it's caused it to, to deform the icosahedron slightly and create this gap. And I want to call this Call's Gap. He doesn't want to name anything after him, but I'm going to call it Call's Gap since he's not on the phone call right now, right? Ooh. So what happens next? We've, we've now reached 20. We've now reached the um, a, a noble state because of these green ones that have been attached. And the only thing next to do is to grow a new nucleus. So now we grow sodium. All we did was add this one and this one. And we now have created the same as the lithium, except for now it's attached. So we painted it red again. This has a valence or an oxidation state is the actual name. Um, it has a valence of one again. And now magnesium, we, we grow on the other side. And now we've added this one and this one. And now we have a one on this side and a one on this side. So magnesium has a, a primary valence of two. So now we actually have, so now we, Ido thinks what happens is this purple one over here is worth three and it's offset. I don't know why he didn't put one over here and two here or somehow when you start looking at valence. So um, valence on this one is a three primary. If, if you look in the upper left corner where I'm pointing is a three one. So it prefers the three is the primary valence and then one is a secondary valence. So anyway, the whole thing keeps building. What makes it so light? Why is aluminum so light, say, as opposed to silica, or compared to silica? It is quite a bit lighter than silicon, and that's an interesting question, is why are the atoms of different densities? And it really, if you think about this nucleus, is um, about one one hundred thousandth of the diameter of the atom, so the electrons are way the hell out there. And the atom is much, much, much bigger than this nucleus. It really has to do with how far away the electrons are from the nucleus rather than how big the nucleus itself is. Really? Okay. The space between that has more to do with the density. Yeah, because, you know, they talk about on a hydrogen atom, if you set it on the 50-yard line of a big football stadium, it would be about this, the nucleus, the proton, would be about the size of a dime. And the electron would be going around the outer seats of the stadium. Yeah, it's not, not closely packed. So, so that's where you get the density of your atom is through the distance between the nucleus and the electrons, and and not from the nucleus itself. That's an interesting concept. Okay. Anyway, it continues to grow, and I can show you that there's all kinds of little nifty things the program can do, and one of them is I can go to axes and actually blow this apart. So now you see the two different nuclets, and you see the green is this binding, this connector. The little grid underneath? Okay. Yeah, and that's, those are actually seven tetrahedrons. And those seven tetrahedrons are perfect. They're, I mean, that's the way I created the model, was I took seven tetrahedrons, wrapped them around in that shape, and then stuck them together. And, and that's how we figured out what the deformity, what this gap was, based on what these, this, these tetrahedrons here, and then you got seven more on this side. They, they forced the geometry, totally. So, you're, so it's, it's you're not based on the icosahedron anymore. It's based on these things. Um, your program has a set of rules that basically it follows to pack these things, and that's 
Is that how it works? You got a set of rules that you don't necessarily tell it where to do it. It just follows a set of rules. Yeah, it so, does. Well, in order to figure out whether or not this thing's going to be blue or orange or blue green or, you know, which one of it's going to be, because when you get into the bigger atoms, you're going to see a lot of them. This is probably too big. Where's one that's... So you have to assign certain types of... So here you see one where each one of these is an icosahedron. The ones with the green have some additional things on top of the icosahedron. If I actually can go to protons here and get rid of these, we'll scale them down. So you can see, um, let me just get rid of the green. And you can see that it's all icosahedrons with these two red, a yellow, and, a, and then the, the perfectly blue one over here. This is a, a perfect one. Oops, my, my screen's moving. The blue one, the dark blue is, is a perfect icosahedron. That's the carbon. And then these light blue are the warped icosahedrons. And then the two reds are the lithium. And then this yellow one is some extra protons, an extra neutron that creates a couple tetrahedrons. And then these floating green things are what are um, what we call the capping protons. They cap off those and make everything neutral. So everything on this atom is neutral except for the colored. What was the yellow? That's actually a free neutron. Or not a, a free neutron. It's an extra neutron. So, it's a proton that is stuck on there that had that is in a in a spot that was already um, neutralized that that wouldn't wouldn't hold another proton. So it had to, the the proton had to bring its own electron with it in order to stick. And so it's really what conventional science calls a neutron. That's what gives it the the atomic weight part of what. Right. Is, okay. So what we find is is this center nuclet here in the very center that I'm pointing at has 12 protons. Now this one has 11 plus these additional four. This one has 11 plus additional four. So each additional one is 11 because one is shared between the two what we call nuclets. Each one of these colored things is a nuclet. Um, so it, you end up with 12, 11, 11 and that's your your first generation is 12 your next generation is two more added on 11 each your next generation is four more added on two to each end and then the next generation is eight more added on so four to each side and then you're through the entire periodic table all right that wraps it up for today i really like edwin as a person and as a friend and a colleague here been working with him for a little over a year year and a half or so and i support his theory and i believe that uh, there is validity in it if you would like to support his model the structured atomic model sam or see more about it learn more about it you can check it out at etherealmatters.org. Thank you.